Hello. In this video, let's discuss how we use MOSFETs as switches in circuits. So, as this was introduced previously, switching is one of the main applications of MOSFETs. In digital circuits, nodes are capacitive and normally they need to be stable in two states, namely a zero and a VDD. Now also we have seen through that MOSFETs are relatively easy to fabricate and hence continued scaling was able to provide cheaper and faster digital circuits hence led to the proliferation of MOSFETs in the digital design space today. Now let's look at the MOSFET a little bit closely. Now here I've shown n-type MOSFET and if you look at this device, this device is a symmetric device, right? So in most cases, the MOSFET is a symmetric device. The line of symmetry passes through the middle of the gate. Now obviously there are some specialized transistors, especially in the IO region where we do not have symmetric, but that's for a special case study. But normally MOSFETs tend to be symmetric around a line that passes through the gate. And in NMOS, once I create an inversion layer, then electrons basically flow from source to drain. So how do we identify which is the source and which is the drain? Electrons flow from source to drain, right? So the drain is going to be the node that is at the higher potential. The source is going to be the node that is at the lower potential, which means that now if we actually start using MOSFETs for digital design, either of these nodes can function as the source or a drain, right? And as I said before, what functions as a drain depends on where the voltage is. So the NMOS is normally drawn in digital circuits very simply as just a switch indicating that either of these two nodes can be source or drain and we identify the source by finding the node which is the lower of the two. Similarly, the PMOS is also a symmetric device. Again, the source and drain will be dictated by the direction of flow of the holes. And the only way we different, differentiate between the NMOS and the PMOS is through this bubble at the gate indicating that the NMOS switch is closed when the gate is high or when the gate is a logic 1. The PMOS switch is closed when the gate is a logic 0 or when this voltage is close to 0. So the NMOS and the PMOS gates are complementary to each other. Now let's look at the NMOS as a switch a little bit closely. In the most simplistic case, I can define this NMOS to be a switch connected between nodes 1 and 2 and the property of the switch is controlled by the voltage that is applied at this node A. Right? So if A is given a low voltage then essentially no inversion channel is created here and 1 and 2 are open circuited that is there is no path between 1 and 2. When I apply VDD at the node A which is when I apply a high voltage then essentially that voltage is greater than the VT of the device. So I create an inversion channel and hence I short the source and drain. Right? So this is a very simple first order view of the NMOS as a switch. Now let's take a little closer look at the NMOS switch. When is the channel formed? So remember in this previous model, we didn't really pay attention to the source and drain. But in reality, if you think about when the transistor channel is formed, the transistor channel is formed when VGS is greater than VT. So it's not VG greater than VT, it is VGS that is greater than VT. So once you identify which is the source among these two terminals, the gate has to be a VT higher than the voltage at the source for this transistor to keep conducting current. That means, suppose I had applied VDD at this terminal, then at least one of these two terminals have to have a voltage of VT at it for this transistor to remain on or for an inversion channel to be formed between nodes 1 and 2. I need to ensure that at least one or two is at. So let's look at this a little closer. Now suppose I've taken an NMOS right, and I've applied a VDD at the gate which tells me that this NMOS should be on. Now let's assume that I have switched node 1 from 0 to VDD. Let's assume initially our source was at some voltage 0, right? So now when this increases, when 0 increases to VDD, what do I expect? 
Since this is a, this switch is closed, I expect node two to also rise from zero to VDD. But what's going to happen is, remember, as this node goes to VDD, this node is slower than this node, right? So this node is the source of this transistor, if you will. So this node will work as the source of the transistor, and hence this node will not rise to VDD. It will rise only to VDD minus VT. So it's a very subtle point with the NMOS. When I just use the NMOS as switch, and when I ensure that I apply a gate voltage of VDD, that means that this node 2 can only rise up to VDD minus VT. So if I want to ensure that this node also rises up to VDD, I need to apply a voltage of VDD plus VT at the gate node. On the other hand, suppose my node at once switches from VDD minus VT to 0. In that case, I have no problems because my output node also switches to 0. Because in this case, this node works as the source and so it's able to bring this node down to, uh, to 0. So what you see here is that when the NMOS switch is turned on, it has no problem passing a low voltage. right? That is if 1 is 0, 2 will eventually go down to 0. However, it has a problem passing a high voltage. That is if the node 1 goes to VDD, node 2 is only going to rise to VDD minus VT. So what you see here is immediately you see the value of 1 which was VDD coming down by a VT. So as long as this is less than the noise margin, we have no problems. But you can think about this if multiple such transistors are cascaded, then you're essentially going to end up losing a 1 or you're going to end up losing the logic value of this VDD. Eventually it's going to fall within the noise margin. So generally what we say is that the NMOS switch does not conduct a logic high well. So if I want to use an NMOS switch, I'd use it only to conduct zeros. It does not faithful when it's conducting a one. Now let's look at the PMOS as a switch. So again here, the PMOS is a bubbled gate at the input. So here one to two is controlled by what's happening at node A. And because the PMOS has the bubble, this is going to work complementary to the NMOS, which means that when A is equal to VTD, one and two are open circuited. And when A goes to zero, I form an inversion channel because the VGS here becomes minus VTD, which is less than minus VTP, leading to a inversion channel here. Now remember the PMOS VT is negative, right? And if you look at this again, you want this VGS to be less than minus modulus of VTP or you want VGS to be less than VTP. Remember VTP is a negative quantity which means that you want VG to be less than Vs plus VTP or you want this node to be a VTP away from the source node for the conduction through the transistor to happen. So which means that when this node goes to zero, that is when I'm shorted this PMOS transistor, that will happen only when one or two go to minus VTP because I need the gate to be a VTP higher than the source. So let's look at the flip version. Let's look at a flip version of what happens when I have a PMOS connected between nodes 1 and 2 and the PMOS is turned on with a logic value 0 or a 0 volt given there. So now when I apply a VDD at 1, right, immediately what you see here is you have this large minus VDD across here. So that gets faithfully transmitted to the drain with no issues, right, because this is going to be your source and this is going to work like the drain. The problem here shows up when I try to pass a zero. For example, suppose node one transitions from VDT to zero. What's going to happen with the source is that the source is not going to transition all the way to zero. Why? Because at that point, this is going to become zero, which is going to be greater than VTP. Right? So you want this difference to be at least VTP. Right? So that essentially means that your node two cannot go down to zero, can go to only a VTP. So what you see here is that suppose this was at zero volts, this is going to be at some positive voltage, which is modulus of VTP. So let's assume VTP was minus half a volt. When I pass a zero here, I'm going to get a half a volt here. And so now suppose if I send this through another PMOS, my zero starts creeping up or my PMOS switch corrupts the value at zero. So what you see here is that the PMOS switch does not conduct a logic 
low well. So the NMOS and PMOS differ in that the NMOS is not able to conduct a high well. It conducts a zero excellent. Similarly, a PMOS can conduct a one very well. It cannot conduct a zero. So when we want to fix this issue, what we do is we build what is known as a transmission gate. So what is this transmission gate? The transmission gate has an NMOS and a PMOS connected in parallel. The NMOS is controlled by A, whereas the PMOS is controlled by A prime or A complement, which means that in, when A is equal to one or when A is high, A complement is zero and both these paths conduct. When A is zero, A complement is one and both these paths do not conduct current and hence in and out are separate of each other. But when I close the NMOS switch, I also close the PMOS switch. So therefore what happens is I have two parts of conduction from in to out and which ensures that while the zero can be passed faithfully by the NMOS, the one is passed faithfully by the PMOS. Please remember both NMOS and PMOS are conducting but in the corner cases of 0 and 1, one of them is able to supply even though the other one shuts down. And therefore what you see is that you have a full swing from 0 to VDT at the input and you have a full swing from VDT to 0 at the output. Now this gate is known as a transmission gate. So this is one of the simplest structures we use to build digital logic. And the advantage is that it's very simple structure to fabricate and it's able to pass zero and VDD with no issues. So to conclude, please remember digital circuits can be built using switches and these switches can be made with either an NMOS or a PMOS. The NMOS and PMOS gates are complementary. That is, or the NMOS switch is closed when the gate is a high, the PMOS switch is closed when the gate is a low. Another thing to always keep in mind is the NMOS can faithfully transmit a zero well, whereas the PMOS can transmit a one well. So if you want faithful transmission of both zeros and ones, we use an NMOS in parallel with the PMOS and that structure is known as a transmission gate. We'll revisit this concept back again when we now look at the CMOS inverter.